All right, let's get searching. We'll head over to our indexed web and search over all time. As you can see, our timeline populates our events based on one hour column per interval. We can option to format the timeline to hide it completely. Show a compact version or a full version. This may be helpful if you were doing something at a more narrow scope and needed to see trend analysis at a more granular level. For us, we can keep it at compact and we can choose to zoom in by highlighting, click selecting a section and dragging it and zooming in on our events. Notice that our events decrease over the total because now we are only showing from April 3rd of 2021 at 6 a.m. the next day of April 4th at 9 a.m. It also gives you a total number of time that you're zooming in on, one day, three hours, and we can choose to deselect or zoom to select. So let's select zoom to selected. And now we have a more granular zoomed in view of those days, which reflect our events as well. When we zoom in to the timeline, it will also update our time picker value. We do not have to set our earliest and latest, latest fields with dates. It will automatically populate in our date and time range since we zoomed in the timeline using the GUI. So this is that field right here, date and time range. April 3rd until April 4th at 9 a.m. Let's go back to review the other sections of the time picker. If we go into presets, this is where we discussed real time versus relative. Real time, you can select a 30 second window, one minute window, or all events as they're coming in at real time. Remember, this will be a more text search to conduct than just using the search bar in relative time. Let's go back to all time. Let's run a search to show all of our events over all of our time for all the data that I have. You can notice now that the events span further back, Splunk auto adjusts the column widths to be one month instead of one hour to fit it all in the timeline. And as you can see, my events cover three years and six months. I have some events in 2017. So let's show the order of precedence. If I set my earliest field to two years ago, and my latest field to now, this will take precedence over the time picker value of all time. I would expect my 2017 results to drop out of my timeline view as they occurred greater than two years ago. That is exactly what happened. Even though we are searching over all time, the SPL takes precedence for my earliest and latest fields, and I no longer see my events from 2017. Presets is pretty self explanatory. Relative, we can change this to minutes, hours, weeks ago. So we could have also done it as two years ago. So now that is the equivalent of setting the earliest and latest fields as we did here. Real time, we've covered. A date range, you can set a specific day in mind that you want to search over. You can do since that date, or you can change it to be in between some dates. Let's say you knew two dates from a start and end point of activity that you're trying to find. Date range may be helpful to you. And if you want to become even more granular with that search, you can add in a between this date and that date and include a time range. And the advanced section is good to note too, because we can also set our earliest and latest, but also the documentation section here comes up for how to use 
time fields, and the time picker values. This is a good resource to review. Good overview of the timeline and the time picker.